For those of you who don't know me, my name is Yi Song Yu. I'm a faculty member at Caltech. I've been at Caltech for about five years, uh, studying all aspects of machine learning. Today, I want to talk about some of our work at the intersection of learning and robotics and control. And in particular, we'll be talking about risk-aware machine learning for dynamic robot control. Okay, so that's a bit of a mouthful. So let's unpack what these words mean. So uh, dynamic robot controls. So what are dynamic robots? Well, in my definition, dynamic robots are robots that need to exhibit some level of agility. So here's one example where the robot, a drone, must interact with the ground and fly really close to the ground but not touch it. So this is a level of agility that can be quite hard to achieve uh, with your off-the-shelf consumer drones. And yet, uh, we were able to demonstrate how to do this, and I'll talk a little bit about this in detail uh, later on in this presentation. Another example is of a dynamic boundary condition. So the ground is a static boundary condition. And a dynamic boundary condition, you can think of as multiple drones interacting with each other. So for example, when one drone is on top of a second drone, it creates what's called a downwash effect that can actually cause the lower drone to crash. And so if you can learn how to control against that, then you can perform very agile and graceful uh, dynamic formations that were previously not possible or very hard to engineer using classical control approaches. Other examples that we do at Caltech include things like uh, exoskeletons and prosthetics. So, you know, how do you design exoskeleton gates that are optimized for the comfort of each individual person, let's say an injured person, while being stable, safe, upright, and all those other factors simultaneously? So these are just some of the examples that we've been working on at Caltech where we really need to be able to perform agile or dynamic robot control. And so our goals are to have robots in these agile and dynamic settings that exhibit, of course, agility, safety, comfort, aesthetics, power consumption, efficiency, so on and so forth. And it turns out that if you talk to a classical controls person or a roboticist, achieving some of these dynamic behaviors can be very challenging because the environment is not perfectly modeled. If you don't model the affordances, if you don't model the, the boundary conditions, if you don't model some of the stresses and deformations of the robot as, as it's undergoing stress, if you don't model some of these things very accurately, then your simple models of the world will cause the robot to, let's say, fall over or crash. And so that's where machine learning comes into play. How do we use machine learning to learn all of these extra high order effects that are not modeled using nominal models of control in order to achieve these types of agility and aesthetics and comfort? And so that's what we're doing at Caltech through a new center called CAST. CAST stands for the Center for Autonomous Systems and Technology. It was founded about two years ago, and it basically is a center that allows faculty from electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace, and computer science to come together and work on these problems very synergistically. So uh, if you're interested in learning more, the URL is very easy, cast.caltech.edu. I invite you to visit our website and learn more. So OK, so this is going to be a machine learning talk. And we're going to talk about how to use machine learning to put it into a safety-critical real-world robot that's performing agile maneuvers by learning all of these high-order effects that we cannot model by hand. One thing that immediately jump, jumps to mind is the fact that, OK, these robots, because they're performing these potentially unsafe actions, we need guarantees on safety, stability, on comfort. When you flew in an airplane, for those of you who traveled, when you flew in an airplane last night to come to San Francisco, that airplane has been certified by the FAA and by other governing bodies and by various companies to satisfy certain safety standards. And a lot of that comes with theorems and proofs. But learning as we use it today is largely a black box. Deep neural nets to a first order approximation is basically a black box, certainly from the perspective of, let's say, certifications at, uh, th at that level that we would be required for these types of safety critical systems. So how do we actually bridge this gap? How do we get the power of machine learning, get the power of deep neural nets, and yet get the safety guarantees that we need for safety critical robotic systems? And so at Caltech, we've been studying this from a variety of perspectives. As you can imagine, there's no silver bullet solution. And so we can dichotomize or, or, or categorize the various approaches along what is needed and what is useful. And so uh, my personal research has sort of uh, di uh, uh, decomposed this area into four philosophies, if you will. On the top left is what I call hi uh, compositional or hierarchical blending, where you have a rule-based system, you have a model-based system, let's say a differential equation of gravity and and so forth, but we blend learning as a component into this model. On the top right, 
we flip the script. It's also compositional blending, but rather than blending the learning into the model, we blend various models within a larger learning-based framework. So you could think of this as, a, for example, a neural net with uh, model-based components as part of the neural architecture. So this is, of course, something that's very exciting and a lot of people are thinking about. On the bottom right, you see an example where we have a planner, but actually coming up with a plan that's provably safe could be, let's say, NP-hard. And so how do we use learning to learn accelerated solvers to solve these kind of problems, potentially in real time? So this is reminiscent of learning for tr accelerated tree search, which you've seen to be so successful in playing games. So it's a, a variant of that. And on the bottom left, you see uh, additive blending, where we blend learning-based and model-based approaches additively. Uh, of course, in, I don't have all day, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to give you one quick example uh, in compositional blending, where we blend learning into an existing rule-based system and do so with theoretical guarantees. And so the example is the neural lander. And so here, the goal is to be able to gracefully and safely land a drone touching the ground uh, in a very agile and provably safe manner. For those of you who don't know, many drone controllers that you buy off the shelf uh, they have trouble f fully landing. The drone typically gets close to the ground, and then you have to just have to cut the power, and the drone sort of falls awkwardly to the ground. And the reason why that's the case is because uh, the ground acts as a boundary condition, which creates what's called the ground effect. And the ground effect actually disrupts the nominal aerodynamics models that people use to create drone controllers. And so whenever the drone gets close to any boundary condition, uh, it has trouble actually controlling itself. And so let's use learning to get around that. And so this is what I call compositional blending. So what you see on this slide, and again, you know, if you're not an expert in control, you, this may be a little bit foreign to you, but just keep in mind that most of this is very standard. This is a standard drone controller that is implemented in almost all commercial drones, or, or a variant thereof. And the, there's one thing that we added, and that's, F, that's uh, F sub A, and that is the ground effect. Classically, it's hard to model this ground effect, and so people just ignore it. It's just always zero. And we're going to use learning to learn that one component and integrate it into a conventional controller. That's the basic idea. And so here's an example. So at Caltech, we flew such a drone. We tried to predict how the uh, aerodynamics evolve as we fly too close to the ground. And the aerodynamics are wrong. And we basically do least squares regression on the residual. At, in a nutshell, that's what we do. And we fit a neural net to this residual to predict the residual ground effect from flying close to the ground. And what you see in the green dots are the actual ground truth measurements. What you see in the orange lines are classical models that people in control theory and aerodynamics theory sort of developed by hand, so equations of motion and aerodynamics that they built by hand. And you can see that they're a very poor model of actually capturing real ground effects. And yet the neural net basically learns it perfectly or within a very, very small error tolerance. And this is particularly useful because now we can just plug this in to our nominal control model to, in order to achieve agile drone control. So here's an example. Um, on the left, you see our neural lander approach. On the right is a standard baseline without the uh, residual dynamics learned. And you can see that the nominal controller cannot properly touch the ground. And typically, what people do is just cut the power and it lands awkwardly. And yet, our controller can gracefully and safely t land. And we can now even get it to land at very high speeds, although we don't have a cool video for that just yet. So why don't we uh, watch this one more time? And so I hope this gives you a taste of how it PyTorch and deep learning can be used to integrate with modern robotics to build agile, safe, dynamic robotic controllers that can perform interesting maneuvers, interacting with the environments close to boundary conditions. This is, in many ways, one of the next frontiers in robotics and control. And so I'd like to thank my collaborators. There are, of course, too many people to thank, most notably the students. But here are the faculty. They, we span electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace, and computer science. And we work together through CAST. And I hope that if you're interested, you come check us out. So thank you all for your attention. <laughs>